Hello, beautiful people. In the last couple of years, all the DIY skate spots that I've built have been destroyed by the city or the property owner. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build an incognito DIY skate spot so the public won't be able to notice it, but the skaters will be able to reap the benefits. That's my goal. And before we dive into anything, let me just say, I'm not a construction worker. I'm not a carpenter. I have no experience with building these kind of things at all. I'm just a skateboarder that enjoys creating these kind of spaces for my community. I had this idea for a really long time. I wanted to build a free form kicker ramps and I just pulled the trigger and uh, yeah, here's what happened. <laughs> Starting with a piece of millimine wood I purchased from Lowe's, I started making a few measurements. One for the height of the kicker and another for the length of the kicker. I decided two and a half feet as the height and then I eyeballed the length, adding a little more curvature transition to the bottom. While doing this, I also referenced a few concepts that I drew up. Hopefully this works. I also marked up our measurements for the two by fours that will box in our concrete. I'll explain that shortly. After making all the measurements, I started with cutting the millimine with my Dremel 3-in-1 saw. This allowed me to make very clean, precise cuts, but it didn't cut all the way through the wood. So I had to go back through it with the jigsaw to make the final cuts. This is our first side panel for the kicker ramp. I noticed there was a kink in the transition, so I made a few marks with my pen to make this panel more transition to bank. I don't want there to be any kinks at the bottom. I went back and made a few more cuts so that I could use this panel as our guide for the next side. Now that everything looks good, I place the final panel on the piece of millimine and trace it so that each side of the ramp is identical. Then I cut the final panel in the same way that I did our previous. Placing the kicker panels next to each other, they are pretty much identical. Now that I have the important pieces of our kicker, I can start assembling the form with our screws. Essentially, we're going to use this form to fill with concrete and ideally we can use it again in the future to build multiple kickers. I was able to find some pre-cut 2x4s that were 2.5 feet wide at the department store to save me some time from cutting each perfect piece. This is what determines the width of the kicker. I'm using a lot of scrap wood from previous projects here. After measuring the width of the ramp on the wood, I made a few cuts so that it would act as the base of the kicker. This avoids the kicker going into the ground and instead molding together. With that scrap wood, I start to piece together our form, starting with the bottom piece. I screw our 2x4s into the scrap wood to box everything in. Now that I have a solid base to catch the concrete, I start screwing the side panels into our 2x4s. Because the mill mine is a pretty tough wood, I used a drill bit to make some holes, that way screwing in the nails would be a lot easier. It's time to start screwing in more 2x4s, but not how we would on a regular kicker. Instead, I'm going to inset each piece at a minimum of three inches into the transition. Now that I have the first transition support beam, I'm going to measure another piece of scrap wood so that I can start boxing the ramp. This will give us the floating ramp look. After a few cuts, I was able to easily place this panel into the kicker. I started screwing everything into place while bending the wood to form some of the bottom of the ramp. Now I'm going to repeat this step for the back panel, but for this one, I'm not gonna cut as short. I want to leave some extra height on the back panel to help out later when pouring concrete. With the side panels on, the back panel on, and the bottom panels on, you can start to see the ramp form. Now it's time to move down the line and add our 2x4s down the side of the panels. But first, I'm placing the wood that'll be placed inside the kicker to make a few measurements. I spaced the 2x4s evenly and tried to give a gap space of about double the width of the 2x4s. Now I'm placing wood down, everything fits perfectly. Now I need to set about four screws into each 2x4 panel. Thank you. 
Our form is pretty much complete and I'm feeling optimistic. This project is actually going to work. I picked up a few bags of concrete, rebar, and some caulking adhesive from the hardware store. I know this ramp is only going to work with rebar. I'm not very experienced with it, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I bought some pre-cut rebar and started to place the pieces together to essentially build a cage for our concrete. After making a few markings on the rebar, I used my wall to bend a few of the pieces, basically sticking the rebar into the hole and bending where the markers are at. This is a really easy and free way to bend rebar without having the right tools. It works pretty good for me. Then I double check to make sure the bend is working with the ramp and the wood form. Similar to our side panels, once I have one good repart piece, I'm gonna use that as a mold for our other piece, making sure they're almost exactly the same in size and bend. Now that I have shaped the rebar, it's time to tie everything together using rebar tie. I ended up needing to cut one piece of rebar into two different pieces, so I could have rebarred every seam that bends. So after cutting the last rebar piece, it's a matter of assembling all of our pieces to create that concrete cage. I used some rocks to lift the rebar up to get a realistic look of how I'll sit when I'm adding concrete. While shaping the rebar and tying everything together, I'm constantly checking the side perspective to make sure the rebar won't pierce into the concrete. The last thing to do before adding concrete is to clean up all the seams, making sure there's no gap in the wood or just harsh edges, using our caulking gun and concrete adhesive. We want to block everything in nice and clean so that the concrete doesn't leak into any weird cracks. I basically start to run the adhesive across every edge of the form, then going back and smoothing it out with a piece of paper or my finger. I repeat this for every edge of the mold that the concrete will be eventually sitting inside of. I let the adhesive dry for about two days. Unfortunately, it's been raining for the last couple of days, so I haven't had much progress, but today the sun is back out. The next step is basically to sand down all of our caulking and get a nice smooth finish everywhere on our launch ramp mold. And the objective with this is to make a nice clean area so none of the concrete can fall into any of the cracks or get crumbly. It's gonna bond together nicely. So that is the goal. Let's get to sanding at the next we're gonna mix some concrete and hope that this launch ramp actually works out. The rain has stopped just long enough to make it the big pour day today. So I grabbed all of our quickery, rapid set quickery, nothing special. That's what we're gonna be using for this. One more kind of housekeeping thing that I'm gonna do is try to figure out the bottom. Right now it just runs off to nothing. So what I'm gonna do is put a board underneath there and then drill some more wood in and I might cut off the very bottom just a little bit. So there's gonna be an edge probably about that high. So I'm gonna to have to, when installing it on the spot, is add some extra concrete or some bondo but the idea is that I think it will stay stronger to one piece if I try to skim it all the way to flat it's gonna be really hard to keep all the concrete nice and strong so the idea here is to get everything nice and closed off now that we got it into a good situation I'm gonna clean it up a little bit get my concrete tools ready mix in my little mini mixer and throw in some concrete tools we're going to use in this step are a sponge a two by four, a magnesium float, and a couple aluminum finishing floats. Since I'm going to be using my little home mixer, I grab 90 pound quickcrete bags to save a few bucks. When I'm building on location, I prefer the 60 pound bags just to save my back. Since I'm building this at home, I'm going to move my umbrella over the ramp into the shade so it doesn't crack or cure too fast. All the prep work we did is going to make this portion of the build really easy because we just need to fill our form with concrete essentially. Always make sure to use safety protection when playing with concrete. I typically wear gloves, a mask, and glasses when mixing concrete. Now it's just about cutting bags up, adding the concrete to my mini mixer, adding water, and letting it create a nice texture. I'm going to start with adding all our concrete to the base of the kicker because this is where most of the weight and the concrete will be. I think it will make sense to have this area also be the first to cure.
while adding concrete, I'm constantly agitating the form. Using my hammer or a jigsaw with the blade off, you can really start to see all the oil and minerals come to the surface of the concrete. This is what will make the concrete nice and smooth on the sides of the surface that we can't get to with our trowels. Now it's rinse and repeat, adding more concrete to form, agitating every step along the way. Using a 2x4, I spread the concrete on our form. The point here is to make sure there's no air pockets or any specific areas that need more or less concrete. Balancing everything out using our form as a guide. This isn't shaping or anything like that. This is just getting the concrete into the right place. Now, at this phase, I'm going to use a combination of my float and 2x4 to get all the concrete nice and packed into the form. I can use the trowel for more specific areas while the 2x4 helps solidify everything into one. As the concrete slowly starts to cure, I can use my magnesium float to make sure we get that smooth surface on the top. Giving the concrete some time to cure, I eventually come back with a finishing aluminum trowel to get that super smooth top surface. At this point, I'm not really shaping or forming anything anymore, but lightly skimming the surface. It's been raining for days, which actually helps this kicker to be even stronger. It's almost got a slow water cure process because of the rain. Been about two days since we poured the concrete into our form, so probably gonna pull it out this afternoon and see how it looks. It looks like it's still curing. I want to try to give it at least two full days from the point of pouring it before I take it out of the form. This can be a pretty scary thing. It's going to be very telling. Hopefully everything works out. Like I've said throughout this video, I don't really know if this is going to work. Just praying for the best. Let's get to it. I started with unscrewing that last piece of wood I added at the bottom of the ramp. Using my hammer and a chisel, I slowly start pushing away the concrete from the form. Somebody mentioned in a previous video to use oil. I wish I did that here. I realized pretty quickly how heavy this thing was. I used some two by fours to get leverage under the ramp and slowly started to lift and turn the ramp over so that I can try and pull the form off. The form is still pretty stuck to the concrete, even after rocking and trying all my other techniques. So I resorted to the last resort of unscrewing a few screws to see if I can break it loose. We have victory. It stayed intact. Man, that was so scary, shimming all this out. I mean, you can see the rebar. See it right there. But, uh, I mean, as you can see the sides, pretty smooth. Pretty smooth right here, which is our whole, like, kind of support beam. Look at that. I think that's good. I mean, that's pretty much what's gonna keep up our kicker. Everything down here. It's looking solid, so now, now, I'm just gonna let this thing sit for a little more. Whew. Now that I have the kicker out of the form, I'm going to place it on a dolly. That way it'll be much easier to move around and get to our install location. A few days later, I had my friend Joe try to install the ramp with me. We quickly realized it's too heavy. Even if we had four people, it'd just be way too tough. After searching for some local areas to install this thing, I just need to remove a few bricks, then ideally I can install this kicker fairly easy. It's just a matter of placing the kicker into the right location, adding a little bit of concrete to the ball on the bottom of the ground. I made a trip back home to mix a little crete so I wouldn't blow out the spot. I went back and started to fill the space where the bricks previously were, connecting the ramp to the ground. 
This is the nice part of the project. Install is quick and easy. I just want to say this has been an experiment. I never know if these kind of things are going to work. In this case, they did work. Uh, there was a lot of ups and downs and tribulation throughout this process. And this video can go on probably for way too long if I showed you a super long skate session. So there's gonna be a very short session and I'm sure I'll be hitting this spot in future videos. So make sure you subscribe to see more skating on the spot and see more DIY videos. I hope all of you are having a beautiful new year. Super excited for this year, I have a lot more of projects in the works right now. I'm actually working on a lot of different things. I'm gonna be focusing more on uh, quality versus quantity, probably more so in this first quarter of the year. So my videos probably won't be as frequent, but hopefully you will enjoy them when they do come. So make sure you smash that like button. If you enjoyed this video and this experiment, I had a blast. I appreciate all you for coming here and watching this video and being here for this long. Leave a comment down below. What, uh, what DIY skate spots do you wanna see this year? Let me know. Also, what did you think of the new intro? Our intro is still like relevant. I like intros because it kind of like establishes what my channel is about. So yeah, now I'm just ranting. I digress. Get out there. Love you all. See you next one. Mash.